It is 5 o'clock, and I call this meeting to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, roll call, please. Council Member Kennedy? Here. Council Member McEachern? <coughs> Council Member Negretti? Here. Mayor Pro Tim Cox? Here. Mayor Garcia? Here. Uh, this is the time for public comments. Uh, there's no one here to address the council or to speak. Uh, we will have the uh, declaration of closed session by our uh, city attorney. Thank you, Mayor Garcia. We have uh, five closed session items this evening that are all set forth on the agenda. Uh, items A and B are existing litigation pursuant to Government Code 54956.9D1. Uh, it's the SEC versus City of Victorville. The title of the case and the case numbers are set forth on the agenda, and one of those is for the Airport Authority, the other for the City Council. Uh, item C is also existing litigation pursuant to Government Code um, 54956.9D1, and that is Frank Lindsay versus City of Victorville. And again, the specific title of the case and case numbers are set forth on the agenda. Item D is Victorville Housing Trust item and its real property negotiations pursuant to Government Code 54956.8. There are two negotiations involved. The negotiating parties uh, are set forth on the, uh, on the agenda, as are the parcel numbers. And lastly, uh, we also have the special meeting notice, and we have um, anticipated litigation pursuant to Government Code 54956.9. Uh, potential is one case and it's actually under subdivision 9E1. And to the extent there is any reportable action with respect to any of those items, we will report it either at the conclusion uh, of the closed session or at the commencement of the 6 o'clock regular meeting. Uh, thank you. Are there any questions uh, from that, our we, city attorney? We just need to also formally open the special meeting, which I just announced the closed session for. Right. Uh, okay, so now we... Um, we're going to uh, closed session? Correct, and the record reflects that we have both the special meeting open and the regular. Okay, we will go into closed session and we will return at 6 uh, p.m. for the regular city council meeting. It is 
and I'm sorry that we are late. Um, like I explained, our executive session went over a little bit, uh, and uh, I call this uh, our regular city council meeting to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, roll call, please. Council Member Kennedy? Here. Council mm. Member McEachran? Here. Council Member Negretti? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Cox? Here. Mayor Garcia? Here. Uh, now if we will have our city attorney uh, give us an update on the executive session. Uh, thank you, Mayor Garcia. Garcia. We had uh, five closed session items this morning, four on the regular agenda, one was on the special meeting agenda. Uh, items A and B are existing litigation pursuant to Government Code 54956.9D1, the case names and numbers are set forth on the agenda, and there is no reportable action with respect to those items. Uh, item C is also existing litigation pursuant to Government Code 54956.9D1, uh, Frank Lindsay versus City of Victorville, case numbers on the agenda. Again, no reportable action with respect to that item. With respect to item D, uh, real property negotiations pursuant to Government Code 54956.8, um, there was uh, reportable action. The City Council, through a unanimous vote, has agreed to sell the property. It's listed as APN number 0395. 21209 to Palladio Development LLC, whose in, uh, name is listed on the agenda, for the purchase price of 75000 That will be pursuant to a standard form purchase agreement, which the uh, Palladio Group has already signed, and it requires a 60-day escrow. <clears throat> uh, the last item was the special meeting notice, uh, anticipated litigation pursuant to Government Code 54956, sorry, 54956.9E1, and there is no reportable action with respect to that item. Thank you. Um, question. Does it <coughs> require an action at this time of the council in regard to authorizing open and escrow or anything? No, the, uh, the council has agreed to enter into the, the purchase and sale agreement that we already have a copy of that has been signed by the purchaser. That's the only and, action we need to take. And on. there was a 5 0 vote, and you have agreed to enter into that contract. Thank you. And now we will have the invocation and uh, remain standing, and Chief Sam Lucia will give the pledge. Uh, the uh, invocation will be given by Minister Karen Ingram from Burning Bush Church. Good evening. Let us pray. Father, we thank you now for this day. We thank you for this hour. We ask you now in the name of Jesus that you will bless the city council, bless the members and everything that they do and they say. Let it be done decent and in order. We thank you for them for watching over our city and keeping us. Now protect those, Father, that do come tonight, everything that they say. Let it be to the glory for you and the city of Victorville. Bless our police, bless our firemen, bless everybody, Father, that watches over us in this city. We thank you now for bringing us here thus far this year. And everything that we do, again, let it be done decent and in order. For it is in God that we do trust, and we give thanks for keeping us all this year. Now bless those that are coming before the city council tonight and everything that they want, everything that they have need of. Let those have a listening ear and a receptive heart to the city, for you have been good to us, and the city has been good to us as well. We thank you now in Jesus' name. We do humbly pray and forever give you thanks. Amen. Uh, now, uh, Madam Clerk, will you please uh, present the agenda to the council? We do have a presentation, Mayor Garcia, by the Sheriff's Department, if you would like to, to hear that first. You're correct. We have a presentation by Sheriff's Department, uh, Positive Change, Not Spare Change program. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. 
Uh, I'm Detective Reggie Pahia from the Homeless Outreach and Proactive Enforcement Team. I'm here to tell you about some upcoming activities we'll be performing in the Victorville area soon. Uh, I first want to introduce uh, Deputy Jeff Collins, who will be going over the anti-panhandling campaign. Good evening, Council. Part of the recently formed Sheriff's Hope Team I'm here to uh, advise of a new campaign that we're starting that the Sheriff has implemented called Positive Change, Not Spare Change. Uh, panhandling is a, an issue, obviously, that affects us nationwide, but here in the high desert, we, we see it on a daily basis. Um, we're seeking to educate the public of the many, many resources that are available in order to, uh, in, to stop donating directly to the panhandlers that you see on the off-ramps and the, uh, the sidewalks and uh, donate that money to a charity that can actually help these people um, get out of homelessness, if indeed they are. In, in our research, we have discovered that about 60% of panhandlers are not even homeless. Uh, many of them seek this uh, monetary assistance to uh, support their habits, such as drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, whichever. Um, however, there are many resources out there that will provide assistance to them to, to get out of this. Substance abuse uh, programs, um, housing programs, all sort, a variety of things that are, that are available. Um, our program is going to encourage the public to contribute directly to these service providers instead of giving the spare change to the panhandlers. Um, People who give money to the panhandlers cannot be sure exactly where this money will go, like I stated. But donors who give money to the service providers know exactly where their funds are going and what their money is doing to help the problem. Um, donating to a trusted local organization rather than to an individual not only benefits these individuals in need, but the entire community as well. Uh, donating to the social service providers is one way that we can all help make a change. <clears throat> Panhandlers are growing in number for many reasons, and here in San Bernardino County and the high desert, we have many people who have good hearts and are wanting to help people. They see the folks on the side of the street and assume the worst and decide to uh, reach into their pockets and help them. That's why the public education about the positive change and not spare change is, is so important. We must educate our residents, uh, visitors, and businesses on how donations are more effective than handouts by providing specific information about what services are offered by the various social services in town. Um, very shortly, we have created a sign that's been approved by our sheriff uh, that you'll be seeing at de uh, businesses throughout the community, actually the entire county, um, going to be in storefronts, possibly at bus stops and so forth to educate our, our people, our citizens here about our program. It's also up on the board. <clears throat> the, uh, the key element of the, of the positive change, not spare change, is public education, like I said. Um, if we can eliminate the giver uh, on the streets, that, that's our main goal. Like I said, the giver, if they could give to uh, Victor Valley Rescue Mission, uh, many other agencies here in, in Victorville and High Desert, uh, it can be distributed out in a more positive manner. Yeah, and that's that's and that's that's the positive change, not spare change uh, initiative that you'll be seeing rolling out very shortly. Thank you, Jeff. Also, we have Deputy uh, Michael Jones. He's going to be going over our uh, our Mojave River operation plan. Good evening. I just wanted to bring to your attention. We worked with City Manager Robertson and Victorville Police Department. Obviously, over the past several years, uh, ten years probably or more. Uh, most of the homeless population in this area has kind of went towards the riverbed. Right now we have about 70 to 80 people kind of on a sliding scale, some in homelessness, some out. Um, in Victorville as a whole, we've contacted about 159 homeless people, giving 57 assistance and referring 78 to different programs throughout the county. Uh, we've housed seven successfully off the streets. And we have 23 veterans in the high desert or in the Victorville area that are currently in the process of getting vouchers for housing. Today, we did a outreach with a team of 10 from Behavioral Health and some veteran agencies, and they let um, one person up at the riverbed know that they just got a housing voucher for him today. Uh, in the Mahai Riverbed, like I said, about 70 homeless people. We're working with uh, some proven practices around the country to do a closure of that area, to eliminate the issues on the private property. A lot of the homeless are on private property up there, um, and they're incurring fines from code enforcement for having homeless on their property. Um, probably about 50 to 60 percent of the homeless population is also on city property behind uh, the park and the 
the uh, levee, riverbed levee on the east side of the freeway. So uh, or there's about 50 homeless camps. Obviously you have some couples. There is no children down there. We make sure of that. Uh, we plan on doing this over several phases. About 23% of the people down there have some sort of income. So they have a way into low income housing and stuff. The Sheriff's Department over the past two years since January 2012 to October of this year has had 4,450 calls for service in that reporting district. So that's 4,450 times a deputy went down there for some sort of problem. Um, in resulting in 693 reports, there's been a murder, three rapes, four attempt murders, um, 86 assaults, and that's just the crime that's reported because a lot of them don't report crime amongst each other. Um, also, there's been four natural deaths over the past month um, just from the people that have been down there. So over the next several months um, into the new year, we're going to be offering them services and eventually working with the city and Victorville Police Department to do closures of those areas in hopes to get the people that are content down there because of no responsibility and stuff like that into housing. Currently, we have about 60 vouchers. Uh, through various programs that are ultimately funded through HUD and it's a permanent house. And then there's several programs out there for uh, rehab and stuff like that. So we have more than enough resources for those individuals down there. But so far, they've elected to be comfortable down there and refused our service as far as housing. Um, so our first phase we've already began. Our second phase, collaborating with agencies the third phase, which Victorville Police Department will do the enforcement actions once that closure is down there. And then the fourth phase would be securing the area with the property owners to close off their property so vehicles and stuff like that aren't able to access down there. That's our action plan for there that we wanted to make you aware of. Thank you, Mike. Any questions from Council? How do we get uh, those posters? When are they going to be available? We have uh, each city will, in the county will receive 20, 200 posters, and we'll be taking them to the Victorville station and giving them to the staff there, and they can be distributed either by COPs or, or uh, deputies to whoever would like them. So they, are, they will be available uh, as soon as probably next week. I just encourage you, since you're going to be encouraging businesses to place those, to get it out to the Chamber of Commerce as well. Absolutely. I do have a, I do have a question. It appears uh, that we have a, a, a larger population of homeless than our surrounding cities. Is that because of the river, or do you know why? It, it, it in part, uh, because of the history of the riverbed, because it, it's been such a uh, out-of-the-way place, uh, out, of, out of sight, out of mind, it has been a, a place for them to go and not be harassed by anybody else or molested so it makes it an easy draw for them to kind of get off the grid out of the light so that does have an appeal to the, some of the people out there where they are off the beaten path I have a question um, this is great work by the way thank you um, there are a lot of people very concerned about facts numbers people I'm, I'm glad to hear that there's no children down down there uh, because it, a lot of people think about that um, but, and this is a great process, so just two questions. One, um, when do you, we think success will be achieved in, in that, uh, I, I think it was uh, enforcement and the last one was secure, was that the last phase? Yes, that would be the last phase. Uh, we're looking at around March to have the, uh, the enforcement phase. Uh, we understand, that, like we spoke before, there's 70 to 100 at any given time. If we can get at least 50 of those people housed, that's a measurable success. That's a quantifiable uh, success for us. We do understand that some are going to disregard the closures and go back in, but at least they're not taking in uh, motorhomes, trailers, things like that. The, uh, the securement will be in either in the form of K-rails or uh, cables or chains. Uh, we're going to work that out with the city to find out which, uh, which it'll be, but it'll probably be closed around March. Okay. And then the last question, thank you. Uh, last question is, you know, there was a park down on 7th Street and D Street, and then this process going through the riverbed, which is great. Uh, is there another future phase possibly within 7th Street or certain other problem areas? Well, it's going to be in phases like that, Deputy Jones uh, described. So we'll start at the Iron Bridge and work our way uh, down. 
Um, so it'll give people time. We understand some people we're going to, they're going to realize we've been telling them for quite some time this is coming. This is private property. You're not allowed to be there. So once they see the closures begin, it'll give them the opportunity on their own onus to gather up their property and move along. And, and we understand once we get to an area, the last area, we're probably going to have some holdouts that don't want any help, then we're going to have to work on enforcement issues at that time. But uh, we do see that the networking that the homeless do is very incredible, so we want to realize that once it starts, we're probably going to have quite a bit there on their own volition are going to leave that area, and we are going to discourage them to not go into the other areas. Uh, we've worked with the City of Apple Valley, and they're going to post on their side as well. So we're not just pushing the problem away. Right, and I, I guess my uh, comment was or a question was more directed towards um, there was just a recent fire Okay. Start, started in, in other words, instead of they may be pushed to other parts, but Seventh Street specifically, um, any chance to do this as well and engage the homeless populations that exist there? Absolutely, and that's what we do. We want to find out how when we this is a, a first for us, so we want to see how this works, and we can apply it on a smaller scale, not just through uh, Victor, but the entire county. So once we do this, we have a, a work the bugs out, if you will, uh, and then we can start on a smaller scale in other areas where we see they might be more heavily impacted. Absolutely. Couple things: um, Is it possible to get these posters uh, posted at the freeway off ramps? Unfortunately, we did ask Caltrans to participate with us, and they they did decline. So we've talked. I've presented at Sandbag at the traffic engineers uh, session, and uh, they have expressed interest. So it's just a matter of working with the traffic engineers to find out where they can post uh, to be lawful. But absolutely, we'd like to see uh, signs posted in those high traffic areas to discourage that as well. And the other one is a year ago more or less, we heard rumors, and I, I can't say they're anything more than rumors, that probation under the, the 109 uh, release provision was giving uh, folks maps to get to the river and where the encampment was. Is there any truth to that at all? We've heard the same rumors, and uh, we have confronted actually with state parole on some of these things for the people we came across uh, where they were vehement, vehement, vehemently denied that they were placing people there but the stories were pretty consistent across the population so we found it a little difficult and we've never seen this legendary map but we do know it exists uh, we'd like to get our hands on it so but we have spoken with parole they are very receptive matter of fact they have worked with us to, to address the problem and realize that we're not going to dump people and we expect somebody else not to dump them in our backyard as well Thank you very much. Thank you very much. At this time, we have our city clerk present the agenda to the council. Thank Did you, Mayor Garcia. Any other, and any revisions uh, to the agenda? The city council of the city of Victorville welcomes the public's participation in tonight's meeting. Persons who wish to address the council on a specific item or any item that does not appear on the agenda are requested to complete one of the white speaker cards located in the council chamber's lobby and give it to the city clerk prior to the meeting. The mayor will call upon each individual who has submitted a speaker card. Pursuant to government code section 54954.3, state law prohibits the council from addressing any issue not previously included on the agenda. The council may receive testimony and set the matter to a subsequent meeting. Comments are to be limited to three minutes per speaker or less as deemed necessary by the mayor. Communications are to be addressed directly to the city council. Individual comments to staff or members of the audience are not permitted. Any individual or group who engages in disruptive conduct during the meeting will be removed from the chambers by order of the mayor. All documents to be considered for approval at this meeting are before the council, and there is one revision to tonight's agenda, and that is in relation to agenda item B1. There is a letter in support of adoption of ordinance number 2327 from the Lighthouse of Restoration Organization. That revision is on the dais and is available to the public in the council chamber's foyer. Those are the all, only revisions to tonight's agenda. Thank you. At this time, I open the public here. Uh, well, we don't have any appeal hearings um, at this time, so uh, we move on to public hearings. Uh, and we start with B1. A city council of the city of Victorville public hearing called for the purpose of hearing arguments for and against code amendments, adopting changes to titles 13 and 16 
of the Victorville Municipal Code, including additions, modifications, and clarifications to the residential landscaping standards. Um, residential wall heights, the definitions uh, section, the land use table variances, and some barriers. Uh, for residential uses along Highway 18 and 395, and the regulation of synthetic drugs with an environmental exem exemption is set forth in the following ordinances. Ordinance number 2322, entitled An Ordinance of the City Council of the City of Victorville approving the landscaping portion of Division 14-00002 a code amendment adopting changes to the Title 16 of the Victorville Municipal Code, including additions, modifications, clarifications to the residential landscaping standards and the definitions section with an environmental exemption. Ordinance number 2326 entitled an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Victorville approving Division 14 00004, a code amendment adopting changes to Title, high, uh, to title 16 uh -huh. of the municipal, uh, Victorville Municipal Code, including residential wall heights, the definition section, the land use table variances, and some barrier for residential uses along Highway 18 and 395 with an environmental exemption. Ordinance number 2327, entitled uh, An Ordinance of the City Council of the City of Victorville, adding a new Chapter 13, 1330, Synthetic stimulant, Stimulants and Synthetic can I, I can't even say that we're going to buy them. <laughs> to the Title 13 of the Victorville Municipal Code, prohibiting synthetic drugs with an environmental exemption and uh, I do have some cards so um, um, I open the hearing at this time and um, I do have some cards so do I call them up at this time or yes I believe cards have been submitted but okay very good item. okay the first one that I have um, I will call two, the first one and then the second one, so you can be ready to come up because you only have three minutes to speak. I, I have Bill Han Hannon, the first one, and the second one will be Iris Gutierrez. Good evening, Mayor Garcia and Councilman. My name is Bill Hannon. I'm the regional chairman for the Lions Clubs in the High Desert and also a member of the High Desert Community Coalition. As some of you may know, a recent four-page article in Time Magazine stated, the most dangerous drug in America today is not heroin, isn't marijuana, nor is it meth. It's a drug called Spice, a synthetic marijuana that's 50 to 100 times more potent than marijuana. You can die the first time you take it. You can have permanent brain damage liver or kidney failure and possibly become a paraplegic as pointed out on a recent TV show with Katie Keurig. Spice and other synthetic drugs are being marketed and merchandised for sale to children and young people. An example would be the packaging on some spice with a picture of Scooby-Doo. Another recent article in Business Week magazine points out that Synthetic drugs have become a worldwide problem with 55 countries recently passing laws banning the sale of spice and other synthetic drugs. In 2006, synthetic drugs were a $1 billion business worldwide. Today, as I stand here, it's exceeded $25 billion. So you can see the rapid growth of this dangerous drug across the world. Kids trying to quit the habit have committed suicide, one recently here in the city of Victorville. Our coalition has waged a three-year campaign to educate kids, parents, teachers, religious groups, service clubs, law enforcement, 
city councils, and many others. I'm pleased to say that several cities in San Bernardino County, as well as the County of San Bernardino, have passed ordinances banning the sale of spice in the cities and also the county. Because state and federal laws have been virtually ineffective the way they were written. We urge you to be proactive and pass this ordinance tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any council people and Mayor Garcia. My name is Iris Gutierrez and I'm speaking. Can you hear me? Pull it down, please. Thank you. My name is Iris Gutierrez and I'm not here to give statistics. I'm so glad that he has them and that you could research and back them up with, you know, all of the data. I'm here to talk about one parent in particular who happens to be a very close friend of mine, Kimberly Ann Signorelli, and a year ago she lost her son. Wednesday he would have been 21. This is a parent that was very involved, very proactive. Joey um, was um, MVP in football in Apple Valley. He was a loving kid. She was a very supportive mother. Once she found out that something was wrong with her son, she didn't know that it was spice that he was using. And it was three years that he had been using this drug. By the time she found out what it was, and she doesn't know, I guess there's not enough information out there to, about this drug, she had no idea about the side effects. She was pretty desperate. I mean, she was no longer giving him money. He was being, he was acting like he was homeless panhandling for the money because it costs five dollars for you to get spice so she begged her brothers to help her her brothers lived in Iowa and uh, that's where he committed suicide so she flew him there to save his life and so I know that it's going to be very very challenging for you to you know probably pass this ordinance I, I hope not but at least think even if you save one life even if you save one life, it is so worth it. So I'm looking at that sign up there, and God we trust, and I trust in my city council. And um, like I said, he would have been 21 Wednesday, but he's no longer with us because... And I wanted to also say that I will help advocate, like I have already for a year. I'm out in the media, and I'm informing the community, especially in Spanish. Um, but I trust that you will do the right thing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, now I have uh, Mashika Russ, I hope I pronounced that right. And after you, um, Mashika, I have Michael uh, Grebhorn, who will be next. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor, Council. My name is Mashika Ross. I'm with the Lighthouse of Restoration Organization. I'm located here in Victorville where we assist single mothers and grandparents that are raising their grandchildren in the high desert that are low income families. I learned about the coalition a few months ago. I've been in the high desert for nine years. I was not aware of synthetic drugs myself. I have three children. They attend Victor Community High School. And there's roughly, there's over five either stores or smoke shops, liquor stores, that's within the vicinity of them walking to and from. Not just my children, but other children. And the reason why I'm, why I'm here is to be a voice for all the single mothers out there. Some of them are working part time, some of them are going to school, and that target market is at a very high risk. And I hope that you guys see something in this ordinance that you're able to um, put a stop to this or address the problem because not only are their children out there, my children are out there walking back and forth past these stores and all it, all it takes is for our children to go in there with a crowd of friends and oftentimes they're looking for a snack and they're grabbing something and they're talking to their friends. And just like he stated, these packages they have Scooby-Doo on them. If these groups of kids are walking in, talking, and they grab a snack, and they take this unknowingly, it can change my child's life and these other people that are here. If they don't have children, they have grandchildren, they have um, nieces, nephews, um, god, uh, godchildren, and this is a serious problem 
that needs to be addressed. And I really hope that you guys hear us, because right now I'm not standing as an executive for the Lighthouse Re Restoration Organization, but I am standing here as a single mother. And I would hope that you guys will not only hear my plea, but a cry for help. I would hate for another, another life to be lost. Like he mentioned, one life has already been lost, and many others have, as long as um, also with what she's saying. So please hear us. Please do something about this. Please come together, because I'm speaking not just for my children, but all the other children that I also assist in the community of Victorville. And thank you so much. I really hope you do something about this. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Mike Grabhorn from the High Desert Community Coalition. And I thank you, Mary Garcia, for the opportunity to speak. Um, I think we have sent you different things. and. Uh, you know, you've got letters from people. You probably all have become pretty much experts on spice and the synthetic drugs. Uh, the main thing that I wanted to point out, and maybe it's more for the audience, because I think, as I said, I think you already know, uh, these substances are labeled not for human consumption. That's a very smart move on the makers of this product, because then it does not have to go through the FDA. It can be sold to anyone of any age, and they have no liability for it. You know, this is actually a drug that's being pushed to sell to kids legally for an inexpensive price. And as was mentioned, it can be lethal. Um, I would like to thank the City Council for passing this tonight, because I know that you will. Um, I would like to thank the Sheriff's Department for all the work and effort that they put in for helping us eradicate this in the city at this time. And for all the members of the coalition and other organizations in the city of Victorville that are behind us on this. And I thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Frank Kelly, and then after Frank, I have Lovella Sullivan. Well, good evening. My name is Frank Kelly. I'm a resident here in Victorville. And I want to say congratulations to you, Mayor, and to the new council members and re-elected council members. Uh, I think most of you, except probably the new council member, know me. I am the uh, chief executive officer of, of uh, organization nonprofit here in the high desert, No Drugs America, where uh, our motto is, say it loud, I need no drugs. Uh, and I have been around here for the last 10 years, and our whole focus is to educate parents and kids about the dangers of illegal drug use. And uh, I've written a letter. Uh, I didn't get a chance to get it to you guys, but I'll read it to you uh, regarding uh, synthetic drugs ban ordinance here. And it's to the Honorable Mayor and City Council members for the City of Victorville, California. I write this letter in support for the request for the synthetic drug ban ordinance as requested by the High Desert Community Coalition, which I am a participant. This type of ban has been approved by the high desert, some other high desert cities, the County of San Bernardino, Board of Supervisors, and the federal government. No Drugs America feels that this type of ordinance will lend more teeth to those laws already passed by the federal government and to deter the spread of these dangerous substances here in our city. The ordinance will be proactive, a proactive effort to help reduce the dangers of those most vulnerable to using these substances, which is, of course, our kids. And as you've heard, you've heard about the kids dying. I even, I even marched here in the city in protest with Joey's mom uh, to close some of the, the uh, smoke shops. So I encourage you all to take a look into your hearts and realize this is an opportunity to make a difference in the lives of so many people, and mostly kids, and the community that you, know, you serve. We will never eradicate drugs in our communities, but this is a good start to showing the sell, to slowing the sale of those drugs down. The nature and the extent of drug abuse in the United States is enormous, but you can help change the statistics here in the high desert by issuing the ban on synthetic drugs. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good evening, council and staff. Those of you who know me know that if I get off on a tangent, I can be quite long-winded, so I've typed it all out, so I remain within the three minutes. <clears throat> My name is Lavella Sullivan. 
I'm the marketing director at Victor Valley Global Medical Center, and I'm also vice president of uh, Global Strategies Management. I'm here tonight to urge you to support a local ordinance to address synthetic drugs in Victorville. I know kids are buying these toxic chemicals because our doctors and nurses have encountered patients who have showed symptoms synonymous with the use of these dangerous synthetic drugs. These drugs can lead to death and already have for at least one young man that we have learned of this evening. I'm told he had been smoking the spice for more than three years. What many teens don't realize is that these drugs can cause death from one use. One time, they can be hooked. I wish I could provide you with accurate numbers as to how many patients we've seen who have used synthetic drugs. Unfortunately, due to the limited availability of tests for these drugs, hospitals like mine have little data on synthetic drug-related emergency department visits. But I can tell you from conversations from our emergency room staff, there are multiple cases where these drugs are suspected. I am extremely concerned as a parent and as a hospital that these dangerous drugs are still available in Victorville. Your support of a local ordinance will reassure our community that our city is taking every step necessary to ensure your youth, our youth, and the community at large are being protected. Thank you. Thank you. I have no other cards for um, item B1. Uh, so now we have B2. Uh, we're going to um, item B2, a city council of the city of Victorville public. Mayor uh, Garcia, yes. you first need to um, close the public hearing on item B1, and then we should take a motion to adopt the resolutions related to B1. Uh, okay, I make the motion to close uh, item B1. You can actually just close the public hearing. Oh, I, I close the uh, and then request public a motion hearing. for approval uh, and or any comments from uh, council members with respect to item B one. Good. Okay. Um, I close the uh, public hearing and uh, I ask for a motion to accept um, item B one. And I assume the motion would include waive or further reading. Oh uh, yeah, the motion will be to adopt uh, ordinances as read by the mayor and also waive further reading. But if I might, I just like to ask uh, Captain Lucia if you could come up and um, there was some indication by some of the speakers that we might not pass this tonight. And I think that that's a misnomer. But also, I know your department has actually been out there in advance of this ordinance educating shops as to the dangers of this and maybe you could speak to what you've already been doing and what you're going to do once this ordinance is passed and then just to make a comment there's so much more to this ordinance than just the synthetic drug part of it but it tends to as government does tag things on uh, a much broader issue so good evening mayor garcia members of the council um uh, Council member, you're exactly right. <clears throat> we have been working hard in applying the penal code to, to some of these problems, and we've been trying to educate the public and also the businesses that are selling this garbage. <clears throat> Excuse me. But synthetic drug use, it's a serious problem affecting our citizens of this city, especially our children. Um, the thing that makes it so difficult when applying the penal code is the penal code addresses the chemical compounds of drugs and it outlaws the chemical compounds, not specifically the product. And these synthetic drugs can be changed so quickly and easily that um, um, a chemical compound can be outlawed and it be changed or enhanced or, or added to, and the penal code no longer covers that as an illegal substance. Um, having a city ordinance will allow us to outlaw simply the synthetic drug altogether and it'll give us a way to actually sink some teeth into the problem. Did I answer your question? Would you like a little more? And do we have a definition then of synthetic drugs that just doesn't allow someone else to maneuver around it? Uh, well, any, anything that is, that is not natural is synthetic. So it, it really covers a broad spectrum of synthetic drugs without having to identify the chemical compound. I don't think that answers your question, though. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure there is an answer to the question. It's just, you know, if, they, if they've come up with these things as a way to maneuver around the drug laws that we already have in place, 
a, a, a synthetic drug would be anything that mimics the uh, um, the stimulant classification of drugs and or the cannabinoids, which is uh, cannabinol is the psychoactive ingredient in marijuana. Anything that mimics the effects of the cannabinoid, any derivative of a, a cannabinol product is considered a cannabinoid, anything that's psychoactive. This gives you the tool you need to work with. Absolutely. Okay. The penal code is ineffective. The ordinance has a lot of definitions specific, but then also has a lot of catch-all language to get to items that we don't even know are out there yet. And I haven't committed all that to memory, and I can't list it for you. <laughs> Well, by combining all these ingredients together, actually they're making a drug. Absolutely. But they don't call it a drug. They call it a synthetic something. Uh, spice, bath salts. There's all kinds of names but given it, to these synthetic drug. drugs. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. If there is a, there is a second, a first, a motion as I understand it? Yes, I, there is a motion. There's a motion by Mr. McEachern and a second by Mr. Kennedy to introduce uh, and waive further reading ordinance numbers 2322, 2326, and 2327. And I had no question, no other questions about the synthetic drug, but I do have a question about the first ordinance. And the staff report says that the rental program is removed from that ordinance. It's, That's it, correct. It's in the follow-up pages behind it, but that comes from a June meeting. Correct. So that's not part of the, the remaining ordinance. Correct. Pursuant to council direction, uh, the staff worked with uh, rental agencies uh, to, I believe, come to an agreement on that rental inspection program. But because of the way this item was put on the agenda and then continued, there wasn't an opportunity to insert that language at this time. We believe that will come back to you probably in January. Uh, for the rental inspection portion, but this would put in place the residential landscaping standards that have been discussed. Thank you. I have a question of the attorney, or maybe the city clerk. My understanding was that this item included three ordinances, and the public hearing included all of them. That is correct. It was okay. It was so the motion with... then also included the approving all of them. Or is that is correct. Motion and required for each one. The, the motion can include all three, all three, and the mayor has already read the titles, so the motion all then okay. is to approve all three and wait Our for the reading. Our vote then will conclude all of item oh. one. Okay. Thank you. The motion carries unanimously. So now we're moving to B2? Yes. Um, a city council at the city of Victorville public hearing called for the purpose of hearing arguments for and against amending chapter 13.90 of the Victorville Municipal Code relating to the places in which registered sex offenders may congregate to align with the state lowering law as set forth in ordinance number 2328 entitled. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of Victorville amending chapter 13.90 of the Victorville Municipal Code relating to the places in which registered sex offenders may congregate to align with state loitering law. Uh, and then I read A and B. Uh, the motion can include um, basically A and B, assuming the first thing to do would be to open the public hearing, get any comments on it, and then seek a motion to approve staff recommendation and the ordinance. Okay, thank you. So op okay. we need to open the public hearing first and see if there's any comments. Are there any comments? And the public hearing itself. I opened the public hearing and do we have any comments? I don't see any. So close the public hearing. I close the public hearing. And I call for. We'd seek a motion from somebody on the council to. Uh, Okay, Adopt ordinance number, sorry, introduce ordinance number 2328 and uh, also then approve staff recommendation that goes along with the ordinance and wait for the reading of the ordinance. So moved, including all those admonishments of the city attorney. I, I think it's worth saying that nobody on this council wants to make this motion. I'm going to second it. Um, we are 
trapped in state law, and if anybody's unhappy about this motion and this ordinance that we're passing, what you really need to do is go take a look at your state legislatures because they're the ones that created the state law that we're bound to live with, and that's the whole purpose of this. The motion's been made by Mr. Cox and seconded by Mr. Kennedy. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, now we move to the uh, consent calendar. And um, do we um, actually approve of the items or do we, are we okay with that or? I move to approve items one through 10 on condition that there's no addition, no comments from staff or questions from council. There's a motion by Mr. Cox and a second by Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Negrete, may I get a vote from you? Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, now we're going to uh, Raven Communications. And uh, the first item is D1. Uh, request the City Council approve the award of a construction contract to Embray Electric Inc. in the amount of $59,900 to furnish, deliver, and install parking lot lighting in support of the City of Victorville Library. Uh, any comments? Um, Motion by Mr. Don't, McEacher. Oh, I don't have me. any cards or I don't see anyone that needs to speak on this item. Do we have any comments? There's a motion by Mr. McEachern, a second by Mr. Negretti. Motion carries unanimously. Now we have item D2, uh, request the city uh, council approve the improvement reimbursement agreement between the city of Victorville and the developer Walmart and Victorville West 395 LLC in the amount of four, $444,311 for credits against roadway fees and stormwater drainage. Are there any comments on that? Um, Mayor Garcia, I just raised a question for the city engineer. Um, the report amount here on the agenda item indicates the amounts for 444,311. I believe the contract itself is seeking approval for a reimbursement amount of 800,506. What is the amount? I want to get a confirmation from the city engineer. Yeah, that, that's correct. The amount in the agreement is correct. We left it that way. We've already reimbursed about $356,000 and change. And so what's reflected in the staff report would be the balance left to be reimbursed. The, the council knows the, the full amount is 800, $800,506.86, 800, but per the staff report, that's the amount that's left on the balance. And this is the amount that's left on the balance? Correct. Okay, so. But that contract was approved? You're approving it this evening. A motion to approve it. Do, uh, do we have a motion to approve? Motion by Mr. Mc. Motion by Mr. McEachern, second by Mr. Kennedy. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, D three. Request the the Victorville Water District Board of Directors approve Amendment <coughs> Number Six to the Wood, Woodard and Current Professional Services Agreement in an amount not to exceed uh, $63,200. Uh, do we have a motion or any comments on that?
Motion by Mr. Kennedy, second by Mr. Cox. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, D4, request the Victorville Water District Board of Directors approve a co consultant professional services agreement with NBS for a water rate study in the amount of $41,525. And number two, appropriate an additional appropriation of $45,700 for the full amount of the agreement plus contingency. Um, any comments on that? If not, then we make a motion. Motion by Mr. Kennedy, second by Mr. Cox. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, D5, and I do have one card here. Carrie Leon. Good evening, Mayor, Council, and staff. My name is Carrie Leon, and I'm the broker owner of Agia Real Estate in Apple Valley. And I'm here to speak on behalf of Denise Otterson. She's the owner of the property located at 14529 Lebrisis Road. We listed the property and went into escrow. During our escrow period, we had inspections done and found that our septic failed. I do have copies for you here. We did get bids on a septic system for somewhere around $2,800. In the process of that, we found out that the sewer location was approximately required to hook up about 200 feet away. Our property is about 140 feet away. The bills, and I do have bids here for that as well, were in excess of $33,000. Um, I would like to read a letter to you. Mrs. Um, Denise Otterson could not be here today because of the emotional stress that she's been going through. So to whom it may concern, I am writing this letter to request a hardship. The current city's plan to make me hook up to sewer is creating an even greater hardship than I'm already in. I by no means have $20,000 or more, which is in excess of 33,000 plus fees of 4,000, be over 37,000. I, I bought my house on a septic and feel that is wrong and unfair to make a widow come up with this kind of money when I am already selling my house just to avoid a foreclosure. My husband, Robert L. Otterson, passed away on May 27, 2009. In addition to the emotional impact this had on me and my family, it also had uh, severe fi financial repercussions. Robert L. Otterson was the sole provider in our family, which was the um, cause of a huge income disparity. I am unable to collect even my husband's Social Security at this time until I am 65 years old. I have been unable to find work and have had to rely on the help of my family and friends to survive. I am a widow living off of $500 per month from my husband's leftover pension. I am no longer able to even give up uh, keep up the mortgage payments, and that is why I'm selling my home. I am in a horrible um, position and unable to pay for any of these expenses. I also filed a bankruptcy in um, March of 2011 I do, um, due to such financial hardship. I am just trying to sell my home to avoid the additional income disparities. Unfortunately, that means that I am not able to meet the financial requirements in order to hook up to sewer. Thank you for your understanding during this difficult time, and I hope we can come to an agreement. Um, the proceeds that she will be receiving after paying for a septic, if she could, would be somewhere around 6000 5000 or 6000 And unfortunately, today she found out that she has to have surgery on her eye and needs the money for that as well. In the event we cannot get the variance, the house would then go to foreclosure. Um, the buyers are also here on this property, and if you need them to speak, they were hoping to make sure that they could proceed and go forward with the purchase of their property. So I respectfully request a variance and let her do a septic instead of hooking to the sewer. And I do have the copies of all the bids if you'd like to see that. Do you need that? 
No, uh, thank you. It's not necessary at this time. Okay. Do you have any questions? Well, D5 is a request uh, for the City Council to approve or deny the request for variance from the requirement to connect to the public sewer system for 14529 La Brisa Road. Correct. Um, I don't have any additional questions myself. I don't know if any of the council members do. No questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Move to approve. Well, the motion would be to either uh, approve, approve the, or deny. Approve the request. Yes. Motion by Mr. Kennedy, second by Mr. Negretti to approve. Motion carries unanimously. Now we have item no number D6, and I do not have any cards. Um, request the City Council make appointments to various boards, commissions, and committees on which the City Council members serve. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to speak with Mr. Negretti regarding uh, the um, appointments. Um, so at this time, I don't believe that I am ready to include that if it's okay so then um, it will be brought up at our next uh, council meeting if you're not prepared to um, act on the appointments tonight yes you you can certainly do that at the next council meeting is everyone in agreement to that yes I guess we are Uh, no, we will uh, bring it up at the next meeting. Um, item, item number D7, request the City Council reaffirm or make changes to their appointees to the City's committees. Um, Is anyone making changes or um, I believe Negretti needs to uh, appoint someone. Are you prepared to do that tonight? Yes, I am, Mayor Garcia. Uh, go ahead. Okay, we have uh, two uh, committees that need appointees. The first one would be for the Planning Commission and I'm proud to introduce Lionel Dew, who's here today as my appointee. The second uh, appointee was for community services, and that would be Marvin Ellis. That's it. Thank you very much. So it'll be recorded as such. Those would require a vote to just confirm those of the oh, council? It is? Okay. Yes. They do. So we make a motion uh, here. Motion by Mr. Negretti, second by Mr. Kennedy. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, now we have uh, item D8. Uh, request the City Council rescind resolution number 14-065 and revoke the cer cer certificate of public convenience and necessity for non-emergency medical transportation for R&B Systems, Inc. Um, Any comments? So we make a motion here for to rescind. Motion by Mr. Cox, second by Mr. McEachern. Motion carries unanimously. Um, item number nine, uh, the request uh, for the City Council to cancel the January 6, 2015 regular meeting. Motion by Mr. McEachern, second by Mr. Kennedy. Motion 
Motion carries unanimously. Uh, item D10, request the City Council appoint two Council members to serve in a committee to make recommendations regarding public art projects. Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, I put this item on the agenda. Uh, we've got a couple of public art projects uh, that the City is processing now um, that would be built uh, with City funds, um, actually not city funds, but uh, donated funds. Um, and uh, we've had a little bit of struggles with uh, what those art projects should look like. Uh, so the request would be to have two members of the council sit on a committee with staff and potentially some members of the public just to evaluate uh, the submissions for the artwork um, and uh, uh, help kind of guide the projects. Uh, we also have at least one uh, private project that has talked about uh, public art as well uh, for a part of their project and they wanted some input. Uh, so this would be uh, at least in part uh, sort of a standing committee so that as potential public art projects came up, uh, the council members could work with staff on, on evaluating uh, the, the art pieces. Uh, question, uh, Doug, with respect to where these uh, art projects would go, are these going to be at parks or other public facilities? Uh, it, these would be at public facilities. One of them is the 50th anniversary uh, public art project that would be right here at City Hall. Uh, the second one is we'd like a little bit of input with our um, Civil Rights Memorial. Uh, we are under construction now or about to be under construction for the, the, the plaque that designates the area at the southwest end of the parking lot. Um, but there's some design uh, development on what each of the individual plaques for those that are nominated and approved by the uh, Community Services Advisory Commission, uh, what those plaques might look like. Uh, so that's the two areas of input on the city project. Uh, the St. Mary's project has indicated that they have an interest in doing some public art, I believe, at their site, and they wanted a little bit of input from the city on you know what we might like there. Uh, I just, as long as our community uh, advisory uh, committee is involved. Uh, from my perspective, that's one of the reasons we have them there. So I think, I mean, I don't have a problem with having council members on that, but I think that, that the purpose of that committee would serve well to be a part of this, this decision-making process. We can do that. I'm in agreement to that. Okay. That's what we'll do. So what, mo what do we make a motion here? If the direction is to... Uh, not uh, establish the public art projects committee and just instead defer it to the uh, community, was it the advisory community committee? Community services advisory, advisory committee. Then yeah, it'd be just appropriate to have a motion to do that. Well, does anyone want to be on this thing? I, I would like to, but I don't have the time. I, I, my only thing is is that if it, if it rises to such a level that requires it come to the council that come with a recommendation from that committee, but that it go through the process at that committee first um, with an ultimate, you know, approval uh, by the council. But I think that that's the reason we have that committee. Um, makes sense that they would handle that. So from, from my perspective, I don't think that we need to make a motion to appoint two council members, but that that committee should um, make a recommendation to the council on those particular public art projects. That's, that's just my take on it. The rest of the council may have a different opinion. You think they're concerned about coming up with an idea, bringing it here, and that we will somehow reject it? Or um, no, I don't. This hasn't gone to that committee at this point. So uh, the 50th anniversary project um, sort of had this structure in mind with a couple of council members, some community mem community members, and working with the staff. So I think having all of these items, public art uh, items, go through that committee is an excellent suggestion. That'll be my motion if it's so appropriate. Motion by Mr. McEachern, second by Mr. Kennedy. Motion carries unanimously. Um, okay, <clears throat> item D11. Uh, request the City Council approve the owner-occupied rehabilitation program lo loan for Enrique es Esqueda and approve the construction contract for Simon Banuelos construction 
to complete the construction project. Um, any Does this comments? have to be modified by the item we discussed this afternoon? I believe so. Uh, I'll let the attorney explain that. Uh, I think what, what staff is looking for is a motion to approve this subject to staff refining further uh, the scope of the work related to the contract. But only related to the contract. Correct. Motion by Mr. McEachern, second by Mr. Kennedy. Motion carries with Mr. Cox abstaining. Now we move in, uh, to public comments. Uh, uh, if anyone is interested in coming up and uh, speaking on any uh, item or anything that uh, they need to speak on. Uh, I don't have any cards. Is anyone? Want to come up and speak? Okay, there is no one. Uh, so now we're going to reports from city manager. Uh, just a reminder uh, for the council and for the public especially is that uh, City Hall will be closed starting uh, December 24th uh, through. Uh, we will reopen again on uh, January 5th. Uh, most of those days are, are holiday days or weekend days uh, or a furlough Friday. Um, there's two days in there that uh, are furlough days that uh, most other agencies don't have, so the employees aren't, aren't paid for those days. It's, it's taken out of their pay throughout the year so that they can have that, that whole week off. I don't know if that's a gift to them or, or not in, the, in that uh, regard. But, uh, so we will be closed uh, for it's about 10 or 11 days or so in there. But uh, there will be certain city services still available. Um, things like police and fire obviously will be available. Our public work staff will be uh, on duty, at least a, a skeleton crew in the event of a major incident uh, that requires, you know, a road closure or, or water. Um, and then even our development departments, uh, if there's a specific need from, uh, from somebody wanting to do some development work, uh, we can call in staff uh, over that time frame. If you need inspections, please get a hold of, of whatever department it is uh, before we close so that you can be sure and get those things scheduled uh, in the event uh, that's necessary over the holidays. Thank you. And Merry uh, Christmas. Uh, reports from council members. Uh, I'll start with. Uh, I just w just one item. Uh, I had a chance to, uh, last week to spend uh, a week with my wife and daughter and the Hubers in uh, uh, Cabo San Lucas. The city of Victorville for some years had a sister city program, I think, with the fire departments uh, at San Jose del Cabo and uh, Buena Vista. And uh, that whole area, as all of you know, was struck by the worst hurricane in their history, in any recorded history. It was just tremendously damaging to the entire community. We had a chance uh, to tour a lot of the city, not just the the party areas, but uh, but a lot of the residential areas, and, and uh, they're recovering rapidly. Uh, the resorts are doing well. The resorts are critical to that population, uh, to their economic health. Uh, the folks there are, are doing well, and they're a very resilient, uh, courageous bunch of people. Just might like to know that. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, Madam Mayor, uh, congratulations to uh, Councilmember Eric Negretti, this is your first meeting, and and uh, I think you see the importance of the items that come before the City Council, where the public uh, looks at this body for critical decisions, and sometimes it's difficult. I know the the one tonight that we we talked about about how do we take things off the market when we know it's destroying our young people, or what happens when the state interferes and we try to have an ordinance that we think is better for the city, but we're preempted by the state. These are, these are tough things, and welcome, and I know you're going to be an integral and important part of these decisions to Gloria Garcia. Congratulations on sharing your first meeting. And to the audience and everyone who's listening, very happy holidays. Merry Christmas to you and your families, and please have a safe, safe and happy holiday. 
Thank you. I have one thing to add. Oh, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Garcia. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Cox, and happy holidays, everyone. Um, as I'm looking at uh, the many requirements and needs that we have over the city, uh, one of my main focuses for the next four years is going to be quality of life. And that, that goes out to many things we'd like to do. Uh, we, we have limited resources, so we definitely need to prioritize. But uh, going forward, one of the smaller projects I think we can do and partner with the private community, private business community uh, and, and a public-private partnership, uh, I'd, I'd request that we have something on our next uh, agenda regarding the feasibility of the skate park. So if we could possibly have the city staff look at that. And um, there is a couple of great um, examples of this. Uh, there's an Etney skate park in Lake Forest. Uh, you know, they have sponsorships from the private side. They raise funds as well. Um, but it is a city-owned property. Um, so that's my one comment. Thank you. Um, Mr. McCracker? Yeah, just, uh, you know, after our... Uh, our letter that was sent to Atalanto regarding additional prisons in the high desert and why are we getting involved at this point in time and, and uh, as to that whole issue. I think it's important to note that we had a change on our council. Um, we had a new member uh, come on our council. Uh, they had, Atalanto had a new mayor and, and two new council members. They had three people change on their council. Um, but I think it's just interesting to note, you know, I think all the cities in the high desert have worked collectively together to try to improve upon the business climate, the quality of life. And um, what happens in one city affects all of us. And so for us to operate in a vacuum makes absolutely no sense anymore. Um, I think the days are gone where each individual city can make a decision in and among, amongst itself and not have an effect on the neighboring jurisdictions. Um, Victorville is right next door to Atalanta, so it's going to affect us the most. But even Apple Valley and Asperia, uh, when you talk to the majority of, of those council members or even any of the outlying county areas, um, they all tend to be opposed to having additional prisons in the high desert. So I, I think uh, the mayor's call for a regional discussion on this issue uh, needs to occur. Um, I think it needs to happen, and it needs to happen as quickly as possible, understanding that we have holidays it's probably won't not going to happen until 2015 but telling Victorville to shove it um, does not do anything to help things um, in the high desert it doesn't do anything to improve the quality of life and I, I was reminded uh, by that particular council member who came over to our city trying to tell us what we ought to do with a particular interchange and what we should name it um, we all have an effect on each other and what goes on in this high desert and for any particular council to just operate within a vacuum anymore, it's just not conducive to the quality of life for all of us, um, not just any one particular city. So I make those comments just to continue to encourage our mayor and our city manager to work with the other cities to uh, get, get that discussion scheduled because I think it's important that we have it. Certainly. Any others? I believe we don't have anything else coming before this council, so this meeting is adjourned. Mm.